Hey, it's Scott Beebe right here. Happy Monday to everybody. I just recently told people yesterday I was actually teaching in our church. I got asked, our pastor was out of town, and uh, I told the entire gathering of folks, I love Mondays. You might be going, my goodness, I hate Mondays. Why do you love Mondays so much? Well, it's a huge opportunity for us to be able, you included, by the way, to be able to leverage the skill set, the gift that God has uniquely given you in the marketplace. And so that's one of the reasons I absolutely love Mondays. And uh, last couple of weeks, we've actually taken these Facebook Lives, and they've become our podcast episodes. And we've got the Business on Purpose podcast. The reason we exist is to liberate small business owners from the chaos of working in their business. And one of the ways we do this is through the Facebook Lives and through the Business on Purpose podcast. And what I do is I answer real-life questions and real-life scenarios that I'm getting in the real-life conference rooms of small business owners as we meet either live, in person, or online uh, sometimes around the world. And so last week, we took on the issue of culture because I got asked, I got asked last week uh, by an actual client. Sorry, let me turn this little music off here. I got asked by a client last week, what is culture? And so they asked this great question of what is culture? And I thought, what a powerful question to be able to ask because when we ask the question of culture, as one business owner put it, it's the most important thing that actually happens within the context of a business. And so this week, what I thought I would do is last week, the question was, what is culture? And if you go back to last week's podcast episode on the Business on Purpose podcast or look at the Facebook Live on my Facebook feed, you'll see there were three major elements. The first one was you had to have a life form of some kind. We call that the human being, right? The second was an artificial environment. We call that the business structure itself. And the third part is you had to have nutrients of some kind. So if you wanted to turn out a life form, the business owner, employee, customer, that resonates with your values, then the nutrients that go into the artificial environment of your business have to resemble the values that you have. And so if you want customers, employees that are going to be excited, smiling, um, uh, passionate about their work and all that, that's the nutrient you have to plug in to the artificial environment of your business on a regular basis. Well, this week, the reason I wanted to kind of go culture part two is because after that one question I got asked last week about what is culture, the follow-up question I got asked this week by a client was, can I delegate culture? <laughs> and my first reaction to that was, I don't know that you can ever delegate culture. And the more I've thought about it the week goes on, I thought, I don't think you have a choice. I think you have to delegate culture if you want culture to begin to kind of breed into the organization or the organism itself. So let's go back to our definition of culture. A life form, an artificial environment, and a nutrient. So the life form, again, is the person. The artificial environment is your business. And the nutrient is that value that you want to plug into that. So if that's what culture is, then the question is, how do we go about embedding that into the life of the organization, and can we delegate it? So my first quick answer to can you delegate it and you should you delegate it is absolutely 100%. I don't think you have a choice. I think you have to delegate it. So then the question becomes, how do we delegate? Now, for those of you who have heard me before, this is going to sound like a broken record, but I want you to continue to listen because it is so, so important. Remember what Joe Calloway says, vision without implementation. What is it? It's hallucination. And so we don't want to be business owners who are hallucinating around these grand ideas, but we're actually implementing these ideas. So there's two ways, as I've thought about this, and I've tried to think about it deeply, that you can begin to delegate your culture within your business, within your family, within uh, friends that you live in, the town that you live in. If you want to change the culture of your town, then you can start doing this. Number one, and go back to the Bible on this, Nehemiah, Abraham, Moses, Isaiah, all these guys, you know what they did first? They articulated a vision. They articulated a vision. So number one, and again, it may sound like a broken record if you've heard me before, but you have to articulate your vision. You have to tell us and yourself where this business is going, because if we don't know that, we have no idea what culture to embrace. Because the detailed snapshot of what the future looks like, that's necessarily going to determine what kind of culture fits what life form grows out of this artificial environment of the business that it is that you're building. And so again, articulate the vision. If you want to know more about vision, go to the uh, Business on Purpose podcast, episode number 46, and, we, and I go extensively into the detail of actually what a vision story is in contrast to just what a simple vision statement is, okay? I prefer a vision story, very detailed, seven different categories, the term of uh, length of term in terms of the time, your family and your freedom, your financials, your uh, product and service, the personnel, the client type, the culture, all these things, we want to draw those out 
so that people see where we're going as a business. Because if they can't see where you're going, then don't expect them to embrace the culture that you're trying to build. And within that, the seventh category that we talk about within the vision story is culture. What do you want the business to look and feel like? What do you want the employees to look and feel uh, when they come into work? What do you want the customer to experience as they go about? I asked one of my clients a couple weeks ago, when you think of the term, and I named one of the most popular, if not the most popular, fast food restaurant, I won't name their name, but when you think of it, what do you think of? And you know what the first word that came to my mind was? Functional. Well, that's the culture. Is it just functional? If you're hungry, functional, you need your gut filled, go to this place, right? But don't go there if you're looking for overwhelming customer service. Instead, go to Zappos. They'll give you overwhelming customer service. But otherwise, because that's their culture, all right, that's the nutrient that they put into the artificial environment of their business to grow the life form of people who are incredibly, incredibly pleased with their work. I did a training this past Sunday to a group of ladies uh, for a, a local organization here that was doing their annual leadership training. And so we spent about two hours together, and I used the example of Zappos. I didn't even say anything about Zappos. All I, all I said was the word Zappos, and immediately the ladies around this room go, oh, I love Zappos, I love Zappos, I love Zappos. And I said, what do they do? And they say, well, they're a shoe company. And I said, well, you know what the culture of Zappos is? Actually, their mission is to create uh, something like a world-class customer service experience. It has nothing to do with shoes. It has everything to do with the customer experience because that's the nutrient they're putting into the artificial environment of their business to grow a life form of satisfied customers. So that's what the culture is, but in order to have it, you've got to have a very well-articulated and identified vision story. Now, to go with that, if you want to delegate your culture into the, uh, the life form of your organization or the artificial environment of your organization, the second thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to have a means to communicate that vision to the people both within your business and also to the people that you serve outside, the community, your customers, etc. And so there's two things. If you want to delegate culture that you have got to do, and for those of you who have coached before, you're like, yeah, Scott, you've told us this before. I know. Implement, implement, implement. Go back to your vision story, articulate it, and then your meetings structure. You've got to have a format. You've got to have a platform to be able to communicate your vision so that the culture that's bred in your vision, in that artificial environment of your business, then has a way to be communicated. It spreads. You know, we talk about videos, cat videos, silly cat videos. They spread virally and all this other kind of stuff. That's how culture spreads. That's how the bacteria of culture spreads. It spreads uh, when one person articulates that culture to another person and they act within line of what they've articulated. So when they follow through on something they've articulated with their culture, now they're following through and in line with the, what the vision details. So the way that you delegate the culture in your business, number one, is you have to draw it out within your vision story. This is what we want the culture of the business to look like. And number two, you have to have a means to communicate that vision. And what we subscribe to in the Business on Purpose platform is a solid structure of team meetings. And we've done these before. We've actually got, um, uh, we've got a, a tutorial and also a, um, uh, like a template that we're going to put up in the next few weeks. And we'll put it up on our, on, our, uh, on our social media channels to where you can get access to it of actually how you coach your team members, but also how you can set and run a team meeting. In fact, last week, if you go back to our social media sites, I think you'll see we put up uh, a template. We put up an actual tutorial of how to lead a rock star team meeting, a team meeting you actually like. You say, hey, I hate team meetings. No, you hate team meetings that are bad. <laughs> Those are the kind of team meetings you hate. What we like are team meetings that actually work, follow an agenda, and they communicate culture. So if you want to delegate culture, if you want to build culture, you've got to write it out and start inputting the nutrients of that culture in those three elements, right? But if you want to delegate culture, you've got to take those elements within your vision and you've got to have your regular standard communication outputs. We like to look at those as the team meetings that are well run with great agendas and great action items and follow-up. Once you've got those two things in place, you can't go wrong. You're going to start to develop a vision for your business. It's really, really powerful. So, hey, thanks for joining me on the podcast I appreciate it anytime you come, anytime you come by Facebook Live. It's always an honor uh, to have you come here. I've had people say, that, hey, we take notes when you come on and do this stuff. I'm so humbled and honored that you would do that. So thank you uh, for that. Really appreciate it. This is also going to be on our podcast, so you can check it out there. Uh, if you just go to mybusinessonpurpose.com forward slash podcast, you'll get that. And also, we have just launched our most recent Business on Purpose 
mastermind group. So if you're interested in that, uh, let us know. Reach out to us, and uh, we would love to connect with you to see if that might be a fit for you. Some people it is, some people it's not, uh, but we've got that out there so that we can help liberate you from the chaos of working within your small business. So, hey, join me next week right here on the Business On Purpose podcast right here on Facebook Live.